Well, sometimes on this channel we talk about how to brew and sometimes we talk about ingredients and things that go into beer, but sometimes on this channel we also talk about things that make brewing easier. Things like temperature controllers. Today we are specifically talking about the Inkbird temperature controller, which we have actually been using in our brew house for a number of years now. So we use the Inkbird for a lot of different applications and today we wanted to talk about five things that we use the Inkbird for that you might not know all of. So to give everyone an introduction to Inkbird and the products that they supply, um, first of all, they are awesome little uh, microcontroller temperature control units. And how they work is you have an input screen that Peter will show you, and uh, they have two ports on the ones that at least we carry and that we use, um, and those are for uh, basic control of hot and cold temperature that you're going to plug into your LCD display. Yeah, so you can set the temperature on these and just have it uh, control something at a certain temperature, or you can also use these to do a program saying, I want this to do this for so long and then do something else. Um, so it's kind of really cool. Some of these, including, well, the newest models, you can actually also hook up to Wi-Fi, meaning you can control them from your phone. You can go onto your phone, download the Inkbird app, and actually monitor uh, any temperatures you want remotely and actually change these temperatures straight from your phone, which is a awesome thing, especially when you're not at the brew house and forgot to crash a beer. So that said, there are some limitations on these guys. We found out the hard way that if you try to put on a big heating element that is designed to heat a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of amounts of water, it can actually burn through these guys. So they are controlled by a small little microcontroller inside of them, which means they can't handle a lot of amperage. It does say on Inkbird's website and on the packaging in the box that they are only good to 10 amps, which is about 1100 watts. Uh, here in the US, so do keep that in mind. You're not gonna be able to power anything that draws a whole lot of current or a whole lot of wattage. There are two main ways to use the Inkbird controller to uh, control temperature. The first is kind of a direct way where you're, let's say you're using a firm wrap, which by the way, we'll link those below, um, to directly heat a, a fermenter or something like that. Um, the second way is actually using pumps to pump uh, water that's either warmer or colder than your temperature that you want through some sort of a heat exchange system that makes your beer warmer or colder. Our first use and probably our most common use is using these controllers to actually heat up a fermenter or kettle for doing kettle sours. Usually we'll hook up one or two firm wraps which draw about 40 watts and we can actually get one of our one barrel fermenters uh, with the neoprene jackets up to uh, right around 120 degrees Fahrenheit with a couple of these things, which is pretty impressive. That said, there is another hack to using these and that is actually coupling them with something like a digi boil or a mash and boil and actually using them with a pump in line to uh, set our digi boil or mash and boil to let's say 110 degrees and then setting the, sol or setting the uh, ink bird to start pumping anytime the temperature drops below the temperature that we want. Our next way we use these is to actually do step fermentation like I mentioned earlier, uh, one of the controllers is able to actually do six different steps. And if you have read anything about quick lagering methods, part of the practice is holding that beer warm for a day or two, dropping it down to your lager temperatures for a week, bringing it back up for a visceral diketone or VDK rest, and then dropping that to your lagering temperature. And what, what the programmable controller allows you to do is program all this in in one step, hit go on your fermentation cycle, um, and it allows you to control the temperature throughout the entire fermentation to end up with a lager in three weeks. Set it and forget it. Uh, number three use for these is actually making a keezer or turning some sort of a freezing chill box into a cooling chill box. That's actually the first uh, introduction that I had to these Inkbirds was when I was trying to build a keezer at home and I saw them and they were the same price that it cost for me to build my own earlier. And I went, oh my God, where have these been my whole life? Uh, it's a really simple plug and play situation to take any kind of a freezer and turn it into a refrigerator for you. Uh, they even come with the ability to have a uh, compressor delay on them, which I highly recommend setting for at least 10 minutes or so. So you don't that burn way, out your bit business? Yep, that way you don't burn out your compressors and they work fantastic for this job. Yep. Uh, use number four, which is something we've used more on the commercial uh, brewing world, is actually using the ink birds uh, with solenoids to split glycol in line. So if you've got one glycol chiller uh, and one pump on that glycol chiller, you can uh, run some solenoids in line, which we'll link some of those from uh, that we used uh, in the description below. Um, to 
basically loop different fermenters and make sure you can cool different things in different stages. Fantastic and inexpensive way. I was gonna to, say, it saves you a ton of money yeah. on uh, an otherwise much more expensive controlling unit. You know, speaking of saving money, something that we figured out that we can do with, uh, with Inkbirds is actually use them as a CoolBot hack. CoolBot in itself is a hack already to save yourself a lot of money on buying a commercial scale uh, refrigeration unit. Um, but CoolBots themselves cost like 300 bucks. Yeah, so I figured this out a year or two ago, and ultimately all CoolBots are is a temperature controller like the Inkbird uh, that has a heating element attached to it. You can do the same thing on a much, much smaller budget using these Inkbirds. All you have to do is program the Inkbirds um, so that uh, you have a heating element that is actually attached to the cooling side in which that heating element, it can be a light bulb, it can be a small fish tank heater, whatever you can find, um, is wrapped up in some insulation with the temperature uh, sensor on the air conditioning unit that you happen to be using. If you want to find out more about that, this is something that we have uh, built and that works for all our backup keg storage, actually. Uh, it works fantastic, and if you want to see more videos on anything that we just mentioned, let us know in the comments below. Uh, other than that, I think that wraps up kind of all the functionality we've gotten off of our Inkbirds. Yeah, I've used them at home for things like greenhouses, for all kinds of different temperature control. I mean, the uses are honestly endless for these things. Uh, they range generally between like $30 and $60, depending on what kind of model you're going for. So they're really an awesome economical tool for uses not only in the brew house, but in life in general. Uh, as always, we'll link pretty much everything we just mentioned below. If any of it sounds like something that you want and the prices are good on Amazon, then please buy them through our links because that gives us a little bit of money, which uh, helps out, uh, helps us afford budgets for, uh, for video making stuffs. If you found this video helpful, please be sure to hit that little subscribe button down below. Uh, also, feel free to give us a like and comment if you have any more questions. Stay tuned for weekly live streams every Sunday morning at 8.45 a.m. Pacific Standard Time, and uh, hopefully we'll see you during one of those or at least on our next video. Now that I'm soaked in puke, thanks, girlfriend. All right. Thanks for your YouTube debut. Damn it. I was doing so good, too. Maybe outside wasn't the best idea. No, it'll work. We got this. <laughs> People, you're not supposed to be driving. Uh. Stay inside. <laughs>